I wish you well in your place amid this hard time. I make some time to make a theoretical review on an interesting work from Karmansky and the other colleagues with the title of Rethinking Attention with Performance. I assume that you have read the abstract and skimmed the paper, learned to focus on their theoretical analysis. This part 1 handles the preliminary on attention mechanism for key notations and the generalization for the canalizable attention. Finally, the work through of the proofs of Lemma 1 and 2, which states about positive random features using hyperbolic cosine and the variational analysis on the comparative approximation methods with a charming result. L is the number of input tokens, D is the size of the hidden dimension, QKV a query, key, and value matrices of attention modules as you may know. The A stands for the attention matrix which has the normalized scores for the value tokens. The paper mentioned bidirectional and unidirectional dot product attention, but I keep using the bidirectional for the general purpose. The function of attention take Q, K, and V. The value matrix V is transformed by attention matrix A, followed by the inverse of diagonal matrix D, which normalizes the output to be the convex combination of value vectors or tokens. The attention matrix A is the output of exponential function, where the input is the dot product of Q and K, discounted by the root of small d. This discount is about the statistical regularity. If you want to know the history, please see the famous citation, the transform paper by Baswani. The diagonal matrix D is the row sum of the attention matrix. Therefore, the computational cost is the cost of matrix matrix multiplication. As you see in this figure, the major cost comes from the matrix matrix multiplication of A and V. Since the attention mechanism is about the product, the colonization may reveal an interesting point. Let's define a kernel K having the two inputs of the dimensionals and the output is a positive number. The positive number condition makes the convex combination by the normalization with the sum. And the kernel is expectation of the dot products of the mappings of two inputs x and y, where the mappings is defined by the phi which project the d dimensionals to the R dimensionals. Here, notice that with the expectation of the dot product of randomized mapping phi, we want to get an unbiased result, the same output with the original computation. That's where the efficiency of the approximations come from with the small r. We will see that what mapping is the grade among the candidates and how far is good. We use the wide hat for the approximated result since it is infeasible to get the exact expectation value. Notice that computational order of the diagonal matrix D hat. The row sum of the transposed K prime is done before the product with the Q prime. This computation released the burden to explicitly compute the attention matrix A. So, this canalized attention keeps the time complexity in big O of L, L, D. Space and time complexity are shown here, and the complexity from D hat is negligible. Notice that the computational complexity of this fast attention approach depends on the size of L, R, D. In the following slides, we will discuss the candidate randomizes mapping functions based on Gaussian distribution. They propose to use the phi 
Mapping functions as follows. It consists of h of x discounted by the root m, l functions of scalar, and m random samplings from some distribution d. We will use the general centered isotropic multivariate Gaussian distribution having identity covariance. Please see that the deterministic SM function is simply the exponential of x transpose y without using the phi. We can express the other form, but it has its simplicity. We will discuss three randomized methods using M samplings. The first one used the sine and cosine trigonometric functions, and the second used the exponential function as a baseline, and third uses the hyperbolic cosine function. Lemma 1 introduced the proposed methods using hyperbolic cosine. They are saying that positive random features, which are presumably the output of dot product, should be positive for the convex combination in the randomized fast attention. If there are negative outputs with bad samplings, may induce abnormal behaviors with large variance. For example, if we choose f1 and f2 are sine and cosine functions, it has potentially negative outputs. We will check it again in the following slide. Here is lemma 1. From the definition of SM, we will derive the approximation using hyperbolic cosine with some choices for f1 and f2 and h of x. Starting from the definition of SM, we can bump it up using binomial theorem. Then use the fact that the integral of the PDF function of Gaussian distribution is just 1. See that it is about the multivariate Gaussian distribution where the vectors are the d-dimensionals. The above center term is observed in the integral of the PDF function, which makes the equality. We can set the center C is x plus y. It's okay. Then use the binomial theorem again for the cancel out with the other term. The two terms are gone. Using the general definition of expectation, we can rewrite using the expectation. Keep in mind that the W is sampled from the Gaussian distribution. Use the Taylor series for exponential function to get the blue box term. Here is one trick that, since W is sampled from isotropic distribution centered by zero, the old I terms are cancelled out in this infinite series. This is Taylor series for hyperbolic cosine, so the proof is completed. As a result, the SM function can be redefined with lambda and the expectation of output of hyperbolic cosine function using normal samples. If we restrict the finite number of samplings, it is the approximation. It turned out that we can specify the f1 and f2 and h of x. This method is notated by hype plus. They also suggest that a simpler version of approximation with positive random features notated by just plus in superscript. This is the plot of the hyperbolic cosine, which has a strictly positive output. Here are summarization of three approximation methods. The first method using trigonometric functions potentially outputs negative values for the cosine function. 
SM plus and SM hype plus have similar forms. SM hype plus exploit the negative of sampling along with positive sampling at once. Is it really helpful? And how much helpful? That's the question to answer in the following analysis. In Lemma 2, we perform variational analysis with measuring the mean squared errors. It is the indicator that if we use just M samplings, how much it varies from the deterministic method, SM. Lemma 2 states that the MSCE as a function of SM and the other terms are related to exponential function, which is bounded to be strictly positive in real values. Before having some speculation on it, let's dive into the proof in appendix. The proof of lemma 2 starts with equation 13, but it needs to be done some arrangement. There is that we borrow the notation of lambda here. Since the white hat indicates the finite samplings, these terms comes with the m normalized summation. In the last equation, all the terms put inside of summation. With a new notation of delta, the difference between x and y, you can rewrite with the binomial theorem. In the following, the binomial theorem is frequently appeared. Keep in mind that next time I will skip the notice because it is trivial. The first term is squared, getting out of the big parenthesis. By the way, we can show that the expectation of cosine function with W transpose delta is the exponential with minus the squared norm of delta over 2. The second line used the isotropic distribution. The third line used the characteristic function in statistics. If you are not familiar with this, it's time to get used to it. And we will use the W is independent and identically distribute random variables. This fact also states the variance of the summation of independent random variables is the sum of a variance of the, those random variables. It is simply the variance of the cosine with W transpose delta. Now we have that equation 13. Here is the check. Then we follow this lemma from you. This lemma states that the variance of cosine with W transpose delta has a specific form in equation 14. Using the notation of z, x plus y, we can rewrite to be the function of SM. This is the end of the first method. Now, for the second method, we use the PDF of multivariate Gaussian distribution. Let's check it out. A couple of rearrangements result in the form in equation 16. Here, we can confirm that the second method is obviously the unbiased estimation of the softmax kernel. To get the next equation, number 18, we arrange with a variance term with a similar approach. Now, luckily, we have a simple form. Now, we get the first line of equation 18. 
The blue box is the other form of variance. We can rewrite using equation 16 again. A simple rearrangement with the property of exponential. Now it's time to rearrange to make the function of SM. Please refer the fact that in this slide. Now it's time for the last case. We need some preliminary works for this. In this case, AI and BI are dependent because they share the same sampling, WI. Notice that the right terms in a and B are the mean of the left terms. With a similar approach, we can show that the summation with 1 over m consists of variance terms and covariance terms. Since variance and covariance are of the squared statistics, 1 over 4 is getting out of the terms. Using the isotropic distribution, two variance terms are merged into a single term, and it cancelled out with the constants of 1 over 2. To eliminate covariance term, we can use the other form of covariance with expectations, since we deal with exponential functions, it can simplify the term. And again, we use equation 16. The variance can be simplified with a similar approach. We can skip the details as it is trivial. Now we have the last line, and we can simplify further with the squared term By the way, by comparison with the MSE of SM+, we observe some similarity. That's 1 over m. The squared lambda. This term is shared. But the red boxes are different. When we rearrange based on these observations, we get the final equation. Notice that the term is between 0 and 1. This time, let's appreciate the final results for the three methods. If SM goes to near 0, the MSCE of SM3 goes to infinite, a quite large variance will be occurred, but the MSE of SM plus goes to zero, charming. And the comparison between SM high plus and SM plus. SM high plus is better than SM plus, even if we consider that the true evaluation of exponential in SM high plus. SM high plus is a better choice. This is it. This part 1 handles the preliminary on attention mechanism, colonization, and the proof of lemma 1 and 2, which states that the importance of positive random features using hyperbolic cosine and their superior result on variational analysis. In the following part 2, it will cover theorem 2 including lemma 4 to 6 and theorem 5 and 6, saying that random orthogonal sampling gives even better results.